One of the things that's causing this funk that people are in is that we're living our lives, many of us at least, in these very unfulfilling ways where you're going to this office with artificial light and you're doing something you don't want to do all day long and then you get home and you're tired. And on top of that, you're eating shit. You're eating potato chips and you're drinking soda and your body is just like, what in the fuck is this? We're supposed to be out in the fields. We're supposed to be walking up hills. We're supposed to be looking for animals or gathering vegetables. We're supposed to be doing all these things that our body's designed to do. We're supposed to be in nature. If you can identify with the description that Joe just gave of the standard working life, of the standard diet, of the standard life, then this video is for you. During more than 10 years of his podcast, Joe Rogan has talked extensively about all the different parts of his life. There's jiu-jitsu, there's MMA, there's comedy, there's elk meat, there's DMT. But what I want to focus on in this video is Joe Rogan's philosophy of happiness. And as you will see by the end of the four main points that I want to highlight here, all the different parts of his life that I just mentioned, they actually all fit into his philosophy of what makes a life happy. The first major point that Joe continuously emphasizes when it comes to being as happy as possible are the people he chooses to surround himself with. This is something I've cultivated for a long time and avoided things that make me unhappy and figured out what those things are and been very rigid about eliminating them from, from my life. And one of the big ones is eliminating interactions with people that are negative. That is gigantic. And be, because I've realized that I'm not really as independent as I used to like to think I was, I used to like to think that my thought process was independent and that I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks. That's nonsense. People say that because they absolutely care what people think and it bothers them. So they say, I don't give a fuck. But that I don't give a fuck stuff is almost entirely nonsense. You do care. And you care in both ways. You care if people are critical of you, care if people are positive of you, but you also care if people are living positive lives and they're motivating you. That's, that's a big one. People are fuel and other people, it's one of the reasons why I like talking to people. One of the reasons why I like to do podcasts because I get a lot out of, you know, like just talking to you about your time in the monastery or your, your push to get to that hundred miles. Like you get energy out of people like that. And you think about this energy and you think about this inspiration when you're doing other things. And it also sets in your mind that when you meet these exceptional people that move you, like what are the characters, what are the qualities that they have? What are the characteristics that they, that they possess? And those things become significant and important to you. Whereas if you live around a bunch of people that are complaining and bitching about everything and they see the negative in everything and they're always whining, those people are the opposite of that. They're the opposite of inspiration. And they're, they're just, they're, they're mud. You're just like, Bleh. it's like you're up to your ankles in mud. You try to trudge through life. It's difficult. You're not light. It's not, it's not pushing you. There's not a wind at your back. The wind's in your face and it's rough, you know? And over time, I've learned that these people, you just, you, you're not gonna fix them. I used to wanna fix them when I was young. I used to wanna go, hey man, I see what you're doing. Like, dude, don't do that anymore. Listen, just try, just just do this and, and stop doing that and start doing this. And if you just work towards this, you could be successful. And then a week later, the guy's doing the same shit. You're like, okay, right. I'm wasting a significant amount of my energy on someone who doesn't wanna waste any of their energy on themselves. And so, managing the the community and the tribe that you're in, making sure that you're a good member of that tribe, that you're doing your part. It's fascinating to see how Joe has deliberately built his entire career on the premise that he wants to surround himself with positive people. Just think about it for a second. He's a professional comic, so he constantly hangs out with funny people who make him laugh. He's an MMA commentator, so he constantly hangs out with people who have the same interests as him, meaning MMA, Jiu-Jitsu, fighting. And then on top of that, he has the most popular podcast in the world, where he gets to interview some of the most fascinating people on this planet. Maybe it's gonna be hard for people like us to take it to such an extreme level, 
but it is something that we can all keep in mind when we think about the people that we hang out with on a regular basis. Who are your friends? What kind of colleagues do you have at work? And how do you decide for yourself who you let into your life? Making a conscious decision to surround yourself with the funniest, most positive, most uplifting kind of people will definitely elevate your life. The second component of Joe Rogan's philosophy for a happy life is that it needs to incorporate struggle. That's where it all comes from. It all comes from life lessons and the lessons are learned through struggle. And I think that there's a lot of people out there that think somehow or another you're going to get to some place where you're living in silk sheets and you're getting your toes done while someone's dropping grapes into your mouth. I don't want that. I've never wanted that. You, that guy's not going to be happy. He's going to be bored. An hour into the grapes. You're going to get those fucking grapes away from me. Stop painting my toes. What am I doing in this bed? I got to do something. I'm not stimulated. The human organism, the animal that we are, needs constant stimulation because it evolved trying to find food and escape enemies and find shelter, escape nature, escape the elements, try to survive. And this is the great joy that you have in taking care of your children, that you can protect your children from the elements and the enemies and feed them. And, and it's also the great sadness that you see in losers. When I see a loser, I see some guy who's 43 years old, lives in his parents' basement, and he fucking hates the world. I'm like, that was a baby. Man, this is a baby that somebody just gave shitty nutrients to, whether it's f nutrients in the forms of food or in the form of thoughts and ideas and examples. And this kid developed these horrible, self-defeating patterns of behavior that have led them to this point where they're this, this middle-aged person with no future and no idea of how to get out of this rut and probably never will escape it and might just wind up sucking on a gun. You know, I mean, this is this is the world that we live in today. And I think part of that world is because we have been fed this line of horseshit that you're supposed to seek comfort. And I don't think you are. I think you're supposed to seek lessons and you're supposed to seek difficult tasks and and and, and, and accomplishments. And through those things and through doing things that are hard to do, even if it's just a fucking 90 minute hot yoga class. I do a 90 minute yoga class, man. I, those last 20 minutes, I do not want to be there, man. And I definitely don't want to give 100%. And I can cheat. I can I could kind of half ass it. I can I can but if I don't and I get through it, when that time is up and the lady says namaste and everybody gets up, I'm like, "Fuck, man. I made it." You know, I lost 15 pounds. My fucking yoga mat is drenched to the point where I could literally wring it out and fill a, a, a jug up with water. But through that struggle, I will now have a better day, and I better fucking do it again tomorrow or do something else because if I just think, well, tomorrow I'm just going to coast and eat Twinkies and watch TV. Oh, hello, sadness, my old friend. Hello, depression, because when you're not doing anything, you feel like shit, and that's just a part of being a human being, and we can pretend that we're something other than what we really are, and we can pretend, nah, me, man, I'm just cool, just chilling, doing nothing. Bullshit. You're a fucking human. You're a human being. You, you evolved from the fucking hundreds of thousands of years of hunters and gatherers and people that were struggling. Those re human reward systems are carved deeply into your DNA. There are so many people who think that a happy life is a life of leisure. And Joe Rogan takes the exact opposite stance. You can't have the feeling of a satisfied and fulfilled life without actually working for it, without actually overcoming obstacles without ever struggling for something that you really want. And this is exactly why it is so crucially important that you choose a path in life for yourself that you can embrace, where you're looking forward to all the struggles along the way because it is the journey that you're enjoying and not the destination. You will never be able to find happiness in leisure. Instead, you need to look for that one thing that brings you joy and satisfaction even in the darkest of times. The third part of Joe Rogan's philosophy for a happy life that he loves to talk about is the body. It's good, it feels good to move your body. It feels good, it feels good to do things, whether it's taking a dance class, I'm not into that, but taking karate. <laughs> I'm not you know, into that shit. Do, do, I like yoga, I like running, yeah. I like doing jujitsu obviously, I like, all, I like all kinds of martial arts, and. 
But I just like moving my body, man. I like right. running up hills. You move your body. Same. Get it going. You'll feel better afterwards. I know you yeah. don't want to do it. I never, I fucking hardly ever want to do it. If my, I maybe want to want to actually do it five out of ten times. But maybe, I do maybe it. less. Yeah. But I do it. I just do it. I know what it's like to not want to do it. I get it. Shut up. I just start talking to myself. I go, come on, pussy. What are you talking about? Do it. If I was you, outside of you, knowing what I know, if I could read my mind, I'd be like, come on, bitch. You're just being lazy. Put your fucking shoes on. Yeah. Get a get a sweat going, and then you're gonna feel pumped. Come on, man. You've done this a, a million times. And then invariably, I'll be in the middle of the workout, I'm sweating, I'm like, fuck yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then I get into it. It's like, it just, you got to push past that creepy resistance. I love how Joe focuses on all aspects of what makes a body healthy. Obviously, he's deeply into fitness and mixed martial arts, but on top of that, he really cares about nutrition. But then he also emphasizes the importance of good quality sleep. He talks about brain optimization. He talks about flexibility. He talks about all these important issues that play a crucial role when it comes to living a happy life. There's a clear body-mind connection when it comes to feeling happy and satisfied. Frankly, I believe it is impossible to feel truly fulfilled while mistreating your body. You can't feel good about yourself if you're constantly putting shit in your mouth and never exercise. So listen to Joe Rogan and don't actually wait for feeling like exercising, for feeling like eating healthy and nutritious food and instead just do it. You will feel the difference in your happiness instantly. And then the fourth component of more happiness in your life according to Joe Rogan is spending time in nature. And nature is like a medicine. Like it literally is a medicine to you. Like okay. people people that go you don't have to go hunting. You don't have to go fishing. Just go fucking hike, man. Just go hike up to the top of a mountain and look out. You know, there's a reward that you get from that that is intensely, like, soul-filling. Mm -hmm. There's, like, something about, like, when I was in Colorado and there was this, um, this area of Boulder where you drive up one of these roads and there was this area where you could park. And it was this incredible view, man. And these people just park and just go out there and just look. But you get there and you park and you go, fuck. Because you would see, you're, you're literally seeing the continental divide. And these snow-capped mountains in July. Yeah. In July, it's covered with snow. Because those mountains don't give a it's fuck. Perspective. Oh. You know, just Listen, I get it. Most of us live in the city. We work in offices. We commute every day in public transportation or our cars it's very difficult to incorporate nature time into this kind of lifestyle. And it's kind of easy to dismiss until you go back in nature and you can clearly feel the difference. Nature calms you down, it is almost meditative, it brings you mindfulness, it takes you away from all the stress and anxiety that we all often experience on a daily level. So again, I believe Joe Rogan has exactly the right idea with this and he actually talked openly about leaving LA because of that reason. Eventually, I'm gonna move out of California, but I really think that there's something that's taxing about the volume of people here. Agree. That bothers me. Especially with kids. When I, yeah, and when I came back from Italy, you know, I was in Italy for 12 days, when I came back, like the, the, the fucking highway at, we landed at like 10 o'clock at night, just bumper to bumper on the that's 405. Crazy. I was like, this is stupid. This is a stupid place to live because I travel so much. I know. I mean, I could travel out of Denver. You know, I could live in Denver and travel out of there. Denver's could... crowd is fucked too, though. It's not as bad. Twenty-five thousand people a month moving there. It's hmm. a beast. Hmm. It's blown up. It's a lot. Yeah. Um, maybe Montana. But there's, <laughs> there's places to live that are more peaceful. I know it's incredibly tempting to chase the big city life, chase your dreams there, chase your career, chase making money, chase girls. All of that is something that the city has to offer. But think about it deeply. Is all of this gonna bring you happiness? Or is a simpler life maybe the right choice for you? It's a question that I haven't answered for myself conclusively yet, but it is something that I constantly evaluate and reevaluate. So to sum up, I believe that Joe Rogan shares a lot of very important and valuable ideas when it comes to living a happy life. And if you want to follow his philosophy of happiness, then make sure to surround yourself with positive people, 
struggle, don't aim for leisure. Make sure that you exercise regularly and that you eat healthy and spend enough time in nature. Just incorporating those four components, I guarantee will have a massively positive impact on your overall life satisfaction. And if you want to get more videos about happiness, then please feel free to subscribe to this channel. This is all I'm talking about here. So make sure to subscribe down there and I'm gonna see you in the next video.